it's ambitious, it's possibly stupid, but a lot of people are gonna be like, why, 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 just get this, that, get the other, get the 790 too heavy, get the 390 no puff, like, why not just convert the 690 into what the 390 should be, right? <laughs> Logical, right? Uh. Welcome back to Riley Bikes. Back in the garden again. This is yet another build, but this is gonna be very different to what we did before. Check out the previous video if you haven't seen the big four 6973 to like enduro thing that I've been building. That bike's incredible, but in three weeks time, we, my girlfriend and I are doing a race. My bike's pretty much set up. I've been tuning it, it's, it's, it's very good. But just over a year ago, some sticky fingered nah, stole her beloved BMW G650X Country. That's what she's done most of her training on. That's what she's used to. The last time we went for training in Wales at the KTM adventure training placey thing. They let her have a go on a 390. Cut a very long story short because this video is going to be long enough as it is. The 390, all the ergonomics, perfect. It's beautiful for her, but she just had one fairly major complaint. No puff, right? This behind me is not a 390. I ended up convincing her. I made her a deal. This was the deal, right? You buy a 690 Duke and I will make you a 690 adventure. It's ambitious, it's possibly stupid, but why not just convert the 690 into what the 390 should be? Right, let's have a look at the bike. So this is it, this is her, the 690 Duke. It's a nice little bike, you know? I've taken it off-road a couple of times, I'll be honest. It's pretty good fun. But how do we make this into an adventure bike? There's so many things that need to be changed. First one, the biggest one. Look at that appalling ground clearance. Like that is no use at all. Truth be told, I have had an exhaust made or a header made. Wheels are another problem, not a huge problem. She's not by any means a fast rider. So the chances of her getting a pinch flat for hitting something, you know, like a square edge too quickly are a lot lower than most. Like she's really not that fast off road, but I'd like her to be faster, especially considering that we are doing a race. So she's going to need spoked wheels, right? Not only is she going to need spoked wheels, she's going to need bigger wheels. You know, wheels that are better at getting in a straight line in some dirt. What else do we need? We need a fairing. We need like a luggage system. Maybe probably better wing mirrors. We need to be able to, there's all sorts of little bits and bobs that we need to do. We need crash protection, all those things. Let's not muck about. Let's just get on with it. It's going to take long enough as it is. This is going to be hopefully a one, a one and done video. Just one, like hopefully. <laughs> really good deal on some second hand crash protection. Guy had already had a little slide on it, but she's gonna drop the bike all the time, so I don't really care. Truth be told, I did like a kind of test mounting to see how it fit with my custom exhaust, and this was rubbing on the exhaust a little bit, so I figured just get your grind on. Not too tight. The uh, eagle-eyed amongst you will have noticed that there's a bracket in here, which I made earlier, kind of knowing that this is probably the method I'm gonna go with. I need to fit some sort of bash plate to it. It doesn't need to be too substantial. She's not gonna be doing any like log hops or whatever. It's just to really protect all the engine from all the stones and stuff flying off her here. I'm thinking this is the method I'm gonna go with, but the exhaust, as you'll see in a second, is gonna come down and round through here and it's no longer going to be slung underneath the engine it's going to be alongside like on a rally bike so the bash plate that i do have is not like a big old rally bash plate so i'm gonna, probably going to need to cut a little bit off but you know we'll see <laughs> I need the spring, but I don't need this rubbish. These are the foot pegs that go on the passenger pegs on an enduro. These are not fit for purpose. <laughs> These gotta go, but I need the spring. Right, here it is. Regular header, cut it there, put in a bend, run it down underneath the side. Comes up and under, like that. And you've got a bit of ground clearance. 
thing. Now that's on. Figure out a way to get this on. That might work. Ouch, that's really, really hot. It's going to be very hot. Good. Looks good. <laughs> Looks really good. It's actually lined up. I'm trying to line it up with the hole where the catalytic converter and underbox for the original exhaust goes. Handily. These are threaded. I reckon I'm gonna want some washers though. Okay, so we've got some batch plate, some tip over protection. Need to protect the handlebars from falling over so we don't snap these even though they are bendy. So these are the old ones from my bike. on this is the stock foot peg this is not good enough this is look at the difference that is a hefty foot peg let's get it on I hate doing these things Like a pro, come on. That was way easier. Little clip thing back on. Let's sort out the luggage and then wheels. I'm going for a soft luggage option. So I'm just gonna bridge this area here so the luggage doesn't swing underneath and hit the tire. Basic, but it does work. I'm just gonna put the screen on. If you wanna know how to make, or how I've made this screen, as rudimentary as it is, check out the link, I think it's up, think it's up there. That's in, I'll show you how to do that in my Big Bore 690 video episode three, maybe four? I don't know. I'll pop this on quickly, then we'll sort the wheels out. So it's pretty straightforward. It's pre-drilled, because I have put it on before. 
four holes, four bolts. Longer bolts keep the angle. It's really easy to do. Yeah, check out the video if you want to see how to make it. It's just made, it's made from drain pipe, actually. So you can have it in white, black, or brown, or whatever color you can find PVC pipe in. One washer. Every time. So there are some advantages and disadvantages to using 2017 stroke 2018 Duke 690 model. The versions before, like the 2015 or the 2013 or whatever, they've got a different engine. And while I think the 2015 ones perhaps have a similar engine to this, or was that in the 701s? I can't remember. Either way, the newer engine style comes with a few new benefits, but there are some little drawbacks, right? So, newer engine style has different ECU different dash so you've got traction control modes ABS got a sport street rain modes kind of thing you've got six axis traction control and ABS like these are not things that came on the previous models and while that is amazing so far even with the 17 inch wheels on and I've been off-road hasn't been wet I'll give you that it hasn't been wet but I've been off-road and I've ridden it in street mode and rain mode with supermoto ABS active which means that the front has got the ABS and the back is free to do whatever you want kind of thing it is it's a lot of fun really 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 loved it but it also means that all of the complexities of the new ECU mean that it's you can't do easy things like switch the wheels over like so on the earlier models like the 2015 or the, basically the ones that don't have the really advanced ECU with all the six axis this that and the other those ones you can just get a speedo healer and switch the wheels over whenever you want right and then just you can set it so you can say like you know I've got 21s I've got this I've got that and at the press of a button you can switch your wheels over we can't do that with this one i spoke to heel tech i spoke to lots of different people DRC, drc i think they're called i spoke to everyone i could think of i've been on forums and whatever the general consensus is if you want to change the wheel size on these ones you need to get special sensor rings made so this is a sensor ring for the rear wheel for uh, 690 smcr because they have different bolt pattern to the Dukes. Dukes have a alloy rims, right? And they have a five bolt pattern. So you need to get, basically I'm gonna be using the rear wheel from my SMCR setup because basically ran out of budget and just couldn't buy another wheel altogether. So we're gonna use the 17 inch rear. I'm gonna put this on it so that it measures correctly the wheel size kind of thing. And I've had to have a custom one of these made for the front 19 inch custom wheel. So I don't actually know if it's gonna work. <laughs> There's only one way to find out, right? When I bought my SMCR wheels, they came with spacer and a larger disc because the SMCR and the Duke have a larger disc than the Enduro, which meant that I have a disc left over and a spacer for doing projects like this, which I didn't know I was doing in the future, but... <laughs> yeah, it's a... 320, I think the, the Enduro takes a 300, so I had to buy a new disc for that, so this... It's perfect. Spacer goes under there. Make sense? I don't know, I'm still really hungover. And on top of all that goes this. This is the custom wheel speed sensor. This is how you fix the speedo and make sure it's correct for the wheel size. So this is designed to make the bike read the correct speed for a 19 inch wheel. That goes on there. So here is the 19 inch wheel. That goes on there, goes on there, and goes on there. Okay, so the Duke axle doesn't fit and the SMCR axle doesn't fit. Turns out it's not the axle that's the problem. The spaces that are the correct size or width are smaller in a diameter. Wicked. These are the spaces from the SMCR. It looks like it's gonna work. Okay, 
that's perfect spacing on that side. The wheel is central. <laughs> had a major realisation. <laughs> direct swap. 690 SMT wheels quite easily fit the Duke. So <coughs> I think it's safe to say that front tire is going to kick up quite a lot of stones and mud so we need a grill and a little flab there. in grip with your knees ideal but it works prettiest thing ever. I don't know any welders in the area so I just had to kind of go with what I can find. Originally I bought this pipe off of eBay and the guy that had it made had this ridiculous pipe on it. It's so unbelievably loud and I always knew that I wanted to put this on because I was always going to be doing this project. I tried this for like a couple of days and like people like a hundred meters away were covering their ears ready for me to go past. It was it was horrific. So in an ideal world if I'd had this header made, it would go to about there and then it would be a turn up and slightly out and then a little turn inwards to accommodate the exhaust back here. But this was 60 quid and getting a low slung made would have cost me with all the extras, probably about 500 quid. I tried to buy a pipe from Competition Works in America. They refused to sell me just their header. They wanted me to buy the whole system, so I wasn't allowed to spend the 600 pounds I was trying to spend, unless I spent a thousand or something like that. It was, yeah. So I found this like a week later and I figured, you know what, we'll make it work because that's what garden building is all about, I think. Just get rid of this useless, useless KTM. I don't know why they bother making these things. They just rattle and they come loose. So what's the point, right? Double take, ram mounted mirror. Just do that up, pretty much good to go. 
for the video, I think I'm gonna call it a day. There's still a few more bits I am gonna do, but the parts haven't arrived yet. One of them is putting a neoprene sock on the rear shock, so when it gets into a bit of mud, the shock doesn't get absolutely caked in mud. There's a few little bits and bobs like that. Service items, putting on the luggage. We might have to go with a different luggage solution. We were trying, let's call it the XL Moto H2O thing. Rubbish. Probably have to go with something else. Again, soft luggage, because again, we've only got the little tiny. Anyway, anyway, anyway. I know what you're thinking. I know what some people are saying is, what's the point? The point is, is it's for short people. I can barely get my feet down on my Enduro and I'm six foot two in the morning. My girlfriend can get her feet down on this and that for her is confidence inspiring. Yes, it's not gonna be legendary off-road, it's not gonna be super fast, there's only that much suspension travel, but ground clearance wise, it's more than the 790 Adventure, not the R, obviously, or the Rally. But for her, this is the unicorn. It can do super fast, it's got loads of grunt, it's super fun, it's manageable. We're gonna lose some of that prowess with the knobbly tires on, but I think it's all worth it. We can go rallying, we can go around the world, we can do whatever we want and she can get her feet down, that's the important thing. I'm sure the 390 is great or whatever, but I'm sure every 390 owner, deep down, just a little bit deep down, knows for a fact they'd rather have a 690 engine in their 390. Who wouldn't, right? Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe and share. This is a one and done, as promised, probably been a long video. Join me in probably the next one while I just kind of just take it on the trails a little bit. I'm probably gonna do that this coming weekend. Subscribe check it have a little look i'll put a link you know if if by the time you've gotten here oh whatever like see you in the next one truth be told if it were my bike i would probably considering how much it weighs probably would take the suspension particularly the forks from the 390 just to give it a little bit more in the front the back's a slightly different setup with the shock but that was my original thinking